I'm gonna start off by saying that this video contains a lot of flashing lights, and once the camera starts shaking, it's not gonna stop shaking for long, so if you're sensitive to either of those things, then well, viewer beware. And I'm sorry. Now from there, my build changed a lot throughout the run. Here's the final version that I think had a good balance of the things that I was after. And now while I fight Knuckle Dragger because I can and you can't stop me, let's quickly cover the rules. First and foremost, the best way to show off any weapon is to do it on OP-10, which is exactly what I'm going to do for one of my favorite guns in the franchise. If you've read the title, then you know that's the Deliverance. This being my first time even playing on OP-10, things are going to be just a little, little weird. Like all of my runs, if it's not the Deliverance, it's not allowed to deal damage. Cars, grenades, jumping on enemies, so on. If it deals any damage, no matter how inconsequential, that's not the Deliverance, and thus is not allowed. Unlike my other runs, the OP levels make the game pretty significantly harder, and I'm allowing the use of unique gear for my class mod to keep guns zerking, and also a deputy's badge for additional reload speed. This isn't how things started, but it's where they got pretty quickly. The shield I'll be using is a purple TDR shield, and to keep things in theme, anything that I know can be a TDR part is a TDR part. Obviously, bar is banned for just being unfair across multiple runs, and at any point I accidentally violate the rules, I will be resetting the area immediately via save quit. For those unfamiliar with the gun, it's a legendary shotgun from the TDR brand. TDR guns are all thrown and explode when reloaded, but this one will actively home in on a nearby enemy if one is available, and shoot them on its way in addition to exploding when it gets there. After the death of Knuckle Dragger and the acquisition of a Hornet, I made my way to Liarsburg. I did more or less instantly get a reminder of an incredibly important lesson that is my face is squishy and bullets are not. Rule of thumb, never pick a fight with anything less squishy than you are. Jello, it's going down. Hot lead traveling near or above the speed of sound? Best not. Among my throwing implements, I mean guns, I have weapons in every flavor. The most important being slag. There are of course the rest, but I had to experiment a lot to find a good balance between when to swap elements and when to just keep hucking. Or at least I assume so, because I'm gonna level with you, I never found that balance. I came here to throw things, not to think. In literally the first encounter of UVHM, I managed to, I think, softlock the game? There was a bully mong that I didn't quite kill, lost track of, and just couldn't find again. My only real guess is that it fell out of the map because I was only able to proceed by restarting. Despite being a shotgun, being away from enemies is a fantastic thing. Not only can my gun track at large ranges, but around corners. There's really not a good reason for me to put my face out there often. You may be looking at this and saying, you're reloading too often, TDR guns do less damage if you have fewer bullets in them. And you're only partially right. The shooting portion of my tracking missiles don't scale with that at all. Or at least, so says the wiki for the game, and I've heard and seen some inconsistencies there. Anyway, after clearing out the berg, I made my way to Boom Boom. I of course fought my way there with great honor and dignity within the conflicts I took part in. Right up until I threw the wrong thing. If you look closer, and I mean much closer, you see what that is? That's right! That's a reset! After some testing, I was able to deduce a powerful bit of information that would serve me well. See, Salvador is actually a mathematician and was helping out along the way. His arms face through each other forming the letter X, which is commonly used in algebra to represent a variable. Based on the angle of these throws, and in conjunction with their travel velocity, I was able to add their individual pellet counts over Y, which would represent a period of 60 seconds to come to the conclusion that my approximate damage to either boom was indeed X, where X is equal to fuck all. I spent a long while trying different things, but you know what's really helpful in the general sense? Knowing how you're doing at any given task. Games become a lot harder without feedback, and until I managed to get Boom over to here, I had no idea what his health situation looked like. Simply put, enemy health regen is kinda crazy high at this level, and I needed to burst enemies down to even be kinda viable. But Big Bertha is fully capable of one-shotting me. Some may even argue unfairly at times. It's me. I'm that some. While I originally started with a Hoarder class mod, I was unaware that I would more or less require a Gunzerker class mod instead to maintain my action skill usage. Thank you to Mick for convincing me to use it, because this run was getting nowhere without having double the DPS up at almost all times. I spent a long while trying to throw things at one boss, but they really like to divert to pretty much any enemy that you're not aiming at, or just bounce around uselessly until they cease to exist due to their inbuilt timer. To deal damage though, I would need to swap between Corrosive and Slag, because without the damage buff from Slag, well, his health bar wouldn't move. The problem came from the fact that I had no way to know when he was or wasn't, so I sort of just swapped periodically in hopes that I was doing something, and I spent a while just hoping for the best, and uh, huh. It is a good strategy. Or it would be if there wasn't an endless spawn of more enemies. 
So with slow time to kill, no survivability, and as far as I can tell, seriously an endless amount of enemies ready and eager to chase down any hopes I had of handling this boss in an even semi-fair fashion, I had to change lanes a bit. So if being far away was the problem, then I just needed to stand significantly closer, where nobody could hit me. Overall great for my health and progress. It's a good thing that Boom stays entirely stationary, or this wouldn't work at all. Oh. No. Well, I was at a loss. Frankly, I was rather FedExed up with this situation. I tried pretty much every place I could think of within the arena. Even my favorite cheese spots were coming up short. Pretty much any distance from the boss would instead lead me to target his human shields. Any time spent not shooting the boss means that Boom's health is going to regenerate. To cut a probably couple hour long story short, I got incredibly lucky. As many discoveries are, this one was an accident. I stood outside of the arena throwing guns up and somewhat away from the boss to increase travel time and get some more shots off from the flying guns. I tried this several times over, but there's an important difference. Only two mobs will spawn at any given time. Infinitely, but two. And both of them are on the edge of the arena trying to throw axes at me from where they're standing. The boss is isolated and targetable. I had no idea if this was actually accomplishing anything because I couldn't see a health bar, but me being me, having quickly run out of ideas, and again, this is the back end of a couple hours, I was content just keep pressing the reload button. In the midst of pondering though if things were coming along at all, boom went down. First, mandatory boss beaten. Let's go. Getting back to normal enemies, things of course went pretty smoothly. They did it! I was able to push through and getting to Flint really isn't so bad, but Flint is a brutal fight. If Boom Boom of all things could kick me around for a couple hours of my life, then Flint was absolutely going to be completely free. Yeah, I knew what I was worried about going in, but switching to Shock let me absolutely body the poor guy. He didn't even get the dignity of pretending to put up a fight because you can really easily just throw things into his arena. I'll start fighting you fairly, Flint, when... No. No, I won't. Anyway, I'm off to make a delivery to the Crimson Raiders. Things were going okay until the Bolumong mound popped into existence in front of my car. My reaction time being slow, I ran it over and had to reload the area. Oh, you thought I just meant damage to enemies. No, no. Deliverance only means deliverance only, and it ain't the weapon that broke that bully mound. Now I'm hoofing it. I got to my destination to drop off a package, but they needed me to go pick up another. An easy task for someone as dedicated as I. Also, the roads were a lot more clear. I managed to find their previous courier, but things really didn't seem to be going well for him. Pretty sufficiently under attack, I took up ye old route for the poor bloke and delivered the most fair package of all. Young or old, rich or poor, do as you're told or want for more. From the lowest depths to where birds soar, a sour taste upon your tongue and burrowed beneath every stitch. They'll hunt you till your body goes cold, death and also junk mail, found right at your door. I brought back his burden, delivered a power core, and despite Sanctuary being tiny, I had to deliver some things around the place. These folks are acting like it's thematic or something. They finally let me into the place so I could access the Crimson Raiders P.O. box. Apparently they don't know where he went, and you need to start tracking your own people. But I don't get paid to criticize. Or at all, actually. I'm fairly sure some of the more advanced Digistruct tech on the planet is run by Hyperion, so either they took my job or provided it. I should have a word with my... boss? That'll have to wait, though. First, I'd have to effortlessly get through a lot of bandits. Definitely not still feeling the growing pains of OP-10. I delivered the gift of health as well as Iridium. The rest was a nice and comfy mix of Lilith and just hucking things from a safe spot because I figured I could conserve my strength for later. I tried to give her the chance to make a delivery of her own, but she kind of royally messed it up. Barely moved me at all. Gotta do everything myself around here. I made my way to a compound of people that were weirdly anti-male. I think I overheard them saying something about microchips and spy drones, but I really wasn't listening. I made my way to meet with a client, hit some wildlife along the way, forcing another reset, and made my way back to pick some things up. Luckily the local bandit vehicles aren't scaled properly to the current difficulty, and so this next part would be easy. Just as long as I don't do anything stupid, like... that... I'm in a spot of bother here. Ah, a concerned citizen! Would you care to help a... Oh, oh, okay then. Well surely there's no way I'd get run over a third time. No, no, wait please! Not gonna lie. Starting to get a bit USPS'd off. I finally made it back with all the car parts to finally get an update to my mail van. I made my way to sneak into their camp because neither snow of cryo, nor rain of bullets, nor heat of incendiary, nor gloom of slag stays these couriers from the swift completion of their appointed rounds. Also, corners are OP, please don't nerf. I began hurling my way through the stronghold, and while I wasn't looking forward to the experience, there are certainly worse ways to get through the place. Just ask my channel how I know. 
Believe it or not, I was making legitimately good time. There were some close calls and some tougher fights here, sure, but it was manageable. Even the toilet room went by with relative ease. I did say relative ease. All of this is to say that I was on a roll. The only thing that could stop me now would be something like throwing a grenade near the last area, forcing a reset to the beginning. What, you think those are allowed? I'm not even allowed to grenade jump on principle. Those throws are strictly banned too. I don't care if they don't hit anything. It still counts. I finally made my way to Roland, watched him get taken, and made my way to his new position. The warden can't be slagged, but it can't regenerate either. If it doesn't regenerate, it can be killed. By any means, by all will, there is no robot constructed capable of halting my mission. To deliver all things to where they belong. To deliver all friends unto safety. To throw a lot of shotguns because it's fun. For the record, I'm not using it here, but the bee works with this beautiful little piece of kit. But with Roland here to soak up some attention, and a lot of loaders here to soak up rounds, I was able to just relax and soak up some sun. <laughs> I don't go outside. But you should wear sunscreen if you do. Take care of yourself. Skincare is important. After dropping him off at home, I made my way back to pick up some intel from a new friend via fighting a selectively immortal fruit. I then had to deliver... stuffed animals. Listen, there's some things I'm not legally allowed to help move, so I'm gonna need you to keep quiet here. Yeah, I really need you to neglect to mention anything about today to anyone. So I made my way to fight Wilhelm, the strongest of soldiers and a vault hunter, almost killing machine. It was tough, but seemed doable. He can't heal, but can be healed and also shielded. With the number of mobs coming in, it was looking like the fight was going to take longer than I would have liked. Make no mistake, it was going pretty quickly, but damage is one of the few things I can't take, so I figured, screw it. Effort is for people that want to put in effort. I'd let my more obscure knowledge of the game carry me through by just hanging out slightly off the map where Wilhelm can't meaningfully hurt me. And then the game itself decided to hurt me through psychic damage instead. There's a weird bug that will just cause the deliverance to sometimes not function at all. For a better view of this, here's it not working in Sanctuary. It seems to mostly happen in places that you're not really supposed to be, but I don't know. Testing around for slightly different locations though, I was able to find a better match for what I needed, and from there it was mostly a matter of time. Moving right along. I said moving right along. I said move- okay cool, I got it. And after only 11 tries! I picked up the power core I came here for and made my way back to Sanctuary to drop it off. Just take good care of it, I hear it can be pretty dangerous in the wrong hands. Wait, that's not- Oh god, that's not the right address at all! Everyone run! Despite everything exploding, I had a job to do. I picked up the things from Roland, like I always do, waited for Lilith to spawn, and in the midst of her doing her thing, I accidentally skipped a pretty sizable animation that she normally does before letting you move on. Watching my footage back though, it seems that despite her not doing her usual casual standing around, it still took about 20 seconds from the time that the objective checked off to the time that I got spawned out, which is apparently pretty standard. Shame that, but I am curious as to why I was able to give it to her and or if there's something there to make speedruns mildly faster. Probably not, but what can you do? I got burned alive by some treacherous lady that I've never met, decided to cool off by going through the fridge, and it was far from ideal, but it went by quickly enough that I didn't get any further burns. Despite what I thought was relatively good speed, I ended up not being able to make it to the bridge in time and having to take the considerably slower and more dangerous route instead. So glad that they included self-destructing enemies in the game. All to fight the gluttonous Thresher. Truth be told, I was pretty worried about the fight. It's fully capable of dealing a lot of damage, even on lower difficulties, so its projectiles scared me a bit. It did turn out, though, that that fear was entirely unfounded. It died incredibly quickly and easily. What even are these guns? Regardless, beacon defense. Honestly, I was kind of in my element. Personally, I think Salvador is by far the most boring character in the game. I have my reasons, but the main one is just the lack of variety in what he can do. He's great with guns, but anyone can use guns. They can also do other things AND use said guns. I'm obviously not going to say that he's bad, but he's not interesting. Just hucking TDR weapons, though, is a, let's say, unique sort of experience that only he can really accomplish in this scale due to bullet regen. And is it good? I have no idea. But the more important question, do I care? Not even slightly. This is really fun. Basic mobs are rarely too much of a concern outside of cases like ironclad lunatics, so all in all, mowing down a swarm of said basic mobs was incredibly doable. I did technically do it without the beacon becoming visibly invulnerable, but it did also kill all of the available mobs between every repair, so it's hard to feel like that's really an accomplishment. I got back to the Crimson Raiders to pass along information of my continued existence, which they took rather well. 
Then I started hearing about some key or something that needed picked up, but there were some really nasty guard dogs along the way, and I don't really know what the DH hell else she was talking about, but I'm off to continue my work. I need a raise. Or a paycheck at all. Apparently Morty's bird has some important information on her collar. Rookie mistake sending a pet to do a person's job. Bet she doesn't even know the meaning of postage stamp. She quickly became my next mission though, which involved killing a ton of loaders along the way. Gonna level with you, wounding them rather than killing them is a bit outside of what I can do with the rate that I do damage. By the time the third one can be wounded, the first one heals and it's a vicious cycle. Easier to just circumvent the whole process through priority mail. I ate some deaths along the way, but I ran into Toomba, who just so happens to be the enemy with a 1 in 3 chance of spawning here at all, and a 1 in 10 chance of dropping the deliverance. So about a 1 in 30 chance of it dropping, unless I'm mistaken. And with some effort put in on focusing Toomba, and only Toomba, I was able to bring the beast down, proving that you can farm the deliverance with the deliverance. What, are you waiting for me to get the drop? Who do you think I am? I've got other things to do with my time, thank you. Like fight to open a simple door! I wasn't sure before starting if guns would track stalkers when they're invisible. Truth be told, I'm not 100% sure now. There was a lot of visual noise going on, and I was just pleased as punch to be living out this playthrough. There were not a lot of brain things happening. I did also find a tubby rack, only to discover that killing it wasn't in the cards for the day. Or any day. At least not mine. You're free to try it yourself, but I've got other enemies to deal with that are kind of demanding my attention. You fool! You know not what you do, for if you dare to strike me down, I will simply rise again, further progress through the area than you could possibly imagine. Heh, <laughs> idiot. And it only cost me... Oh, god, don't look at that. Just need to think affordable thoughts. I finally located Bloodwing, who I guess was normally further away than I thought. She always looked so much smaller before. Perspective is crazy like that, I suppose. She normally does a lot of flying around, which can be a bit of a pain. But if you're familiar with how I like to handle this Sheremy wannabe, then you're aware that I think fighting fair is overrated, and I watched this airmail go the way of the dodo. Easy fight, easy life. I'll be having that. I swung by Claptrap to give him his upgrade, and also dealt literally millions of damage to him without even mildly scratching his paint. Every day I draw breath in Sanctuary is a day that Claptrap chooses not to obliterate me. For the first time, I'm not having to carry things like the concept of safety or something extremely illegal. For once, it's just a letter. It was a delightful time. I didn't have to kill anyone. I mean, until I did, but there were a few seconds there that I didn't have to. It was nice. Hey, no, no, don't shoot the messenger. I think you're getting it twisted. But even then, things were going great. Super manageable. Until this completely random, no good, Regrettably clapping, nasty smelling, disagreeably speaking, second rate, unacceptable, poor quality, atrociously dressed, lousy walking, imperfect breathing, inadequate being, this substandard, atrocious, and all around awful, this inferior intellectual, crummy constituent, lamentable layabout, dreadful Dastard, chronically egregious, slimy slab of a person, nearly done did kill me. God damn, imagine nearly dying to sarcastic slab. Yeah, the brick portion went fine. I'm not really sure what was in the letter, but whatever it was, it left him really in the mood to punch some metal things. After, he came back with me to Sanctuary. Yeah, special delivery, Roland. But a courier never sleeps. It's not a motto thing, we're just chronically underfunded, and I haven't seen my family in three weeks. Please, I've forgotten what food tastes like, send help! I've got a great opportunity to talk with Jack, though. I'm here to bring him something, grab something for Roland at the same time, and I was having a hell of a time getting a steady meeting. I can kill one thing at a time with relative consistency, but this place is pretty damn flooded with mobs. I ended up having to clear out the majority of his associates to schedule a meeting with the guy, because my gun really liked to target literally anything else. After spending a while swapping around my elements to try to match flesh, armor, and also shield, as usual, Jack finally decided to sit still. At least he made my life easier. Wait a minute, you're not Jack at all! Mail theft is a federal crime, and frankly, speaking from years of experience on the receiving end, it's incredibly annoying. As luck would have it, I needed to go get some postage stamps before being able to proceed. I checked back in, and it sounds like they wanted to forward his mail to the real guy, so off I went. Things would have gone fine, but his lawn gnome had some weird ideas about home security. It was plenty easy to deal with, but I got some weird sprinkler looking things that I mostly deactivated via corner strats, and then came to a bigger one. It really doesn't seem like he's too worried about overwatering though, because there were sprinklers around up top. 
For work reasons, I'm just here to leave a package, but he's got to make that difficult. Even worse, though, the big man has a really funny-looking guard dog that flies. Looks to me more like a frisbee, but either way, I ain't stopping now. The enemy spawns may be infinite, but so is my ammo. The bunker doesn't regen, I have range on my side, and any chance I can to trash this hunk of junk is a beautiful thing indeed. Am I bitter? Spiteful, even? Maybe. But at least I'm still standing. Don't worry though, old friend, there will be no need for you to waste any of your energy trying to get back up into the sky. This is ground mail. I plunged off a cliff to perform a totally necessary elevator skip because it's customary and just generally fun. And at the bottom I found some random lady who I was here to deliver some death to as well. I tried, but she just wouldn't sign for it for some reason. I found that ripping and tearing through the area went surprisingly smoothly. Even Angelic Guards didn't stand up long to the barrage of rubbish I had up my sleeves. I was genuinely shocked by how comfortable even a place as bad as Angel Core could become after how the run started. Wait, Angel Core. As in... I do know who this is. It's Jack's daughter. My employer, maybe. Well, in that case, I've got something else for you in my messenger bag. Jack, today... I'm here to deliver in some message. Pay your employees, you cheap bastard! You can't silence the union forever! If you'd believe it, I just got back and now they want me to go bring Lil some safety. I was just there, guys. I was just there. Well, no rest for the wicked. I got a wrong address because someone couldn't be bothered to file a change of address. It's not that hard and some places will even let you do it online. If you've changed your name though, then I wish you luck. Getting your name legally changed makes a lot of things harder, which is rubbish. The price we pay for happiness sometimes. I do fully support getting your name changed though, because it's a price worth paying. Whether it's because it doesn't represent you, or there's just something that brings you more joy, life is too short to live under the wrong name. If the right one is what you were assigned at birth, own it. If it wasn't, don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Nobody worth keeping in your life will fight you on it. Surprising literally nobody that's seen my other runs, I fought a series of disgruntled shield looting charlatans from the comfort of an elevator shaft. It's pretty much just as complex as usual, which is to say, not. Not even nearly as time consuming as the basic repeater either. I did have a bit of difficulty getting to a local man's vehicle, pretty much entirely due to some unwarranted hostility from the locals. I'm just out here trying to do my job and I'm getting shot. So after spending a touch of my time to clear out the enemies and, uh, Gently suggest that they change career path while on my turf, or, or, um, my route. I then dropped in to remind Mortar that when it comes to delivering explosive quality service, I'm first class. Up top, and after doing some pest extermination as a sort of side gig, I was careful to pass off some more reminding. I'm branching out into buzzards, and I ain't looking for competition. Just don't you dare go crossing me, Brick. Ah, I'm just kidding. I love Brick. He's a treat. I did run into some car troubles, which had me running to my next location. It's kind of annoying, but not even close to the worst thing I've done within the game. It's time consuming, sure, but I don't think it's even close to the top 10. I ended up having to clear out some pipelines on my way to my next job. If you think about it, tubes are like really long and typically cylindrical mail carriers. The mail may be in a weird shape, but you know. Eh. Along my travels, I found a giant robot that uses a series of drones to handle moving bombs from point A to B. Simply put, that's my shtick. I have no intention of sharing it with this fellow, no matter how insistent it would become. I'd also like to take a moment to celebrate bringing down Saturn. It's not something I always feel like taking the time to do, and I really like this gun. Fun times, had by all. Except Saturn and its dumb looking rings. Couldn't be satisfied with moons, had to have rings. With it dead and gone, I made my way into a Hyperion compound to steal some of their data. It's time for some corporate UP espionage. After missing the fast travel for Iridium Blight, I managed to get another reset going through the dust at one of the last possible opportunities, because that's just how these things tend to go. GET OUT OF THE LACK OF ROAD! The claptrap door isn't typically so much a challenge as the time sink. Of course, there's arguably crossover between the two when considering the philosophy of what makes a challenge. Is it the skill required? The knowledge required? The time committed? So on. Well, it's many things. We do these things because we love a game. We do them because we hate it. We do them because they're fun, and we do them because they're not. Fundamentally, the reason folks like myself take these challenges head-on varies person to person. What each of us does or doesn't get from it is our own personal experience, and we endeavor to share it with you. Bringing along those that carry our same curiosity, even if they lack the resources to carry our commitments. And I believe that curiosity is fueled not by whether or not we should, but by whether or not we could. Someone dared to ask a question, and someone chose to rise to the occasion. Though the difficulties they may face will change, challenges are simply a product of the human condition. Though some will come more easily, and some with a great deal of strife, each carries a story from a person who is unafraid to ask a question. 
By a video existing, you can usually draw some conclusions before ever checking. This much is true. But you'll never truly know what their journey meant to them until you dare to listen. Until you dare to find out just what they learned along the way. Or something like that anyway, I'm delivering mail. Quality will certainly vary, but my hope is that there will always be stories worth telling to deliver along the way. Anyway, I made a mad dash to Brick so he could begin carry... Uh, helping. Helping me along the way. As much as things change, things also stay the same. Sitting behind cover to throw slag guns to help Brick was a reasonably workable strategy. Admittedly, I got impatient and ended up trying to assist a bit more, which came with mixed results. After was a shockingly smooth run straight through the remainder of Heroes Pass, and I was finally to the last area of the game. Just two fights to work out, and I'm home free. Listen up, Jack. I'm not even sure if I'm under your employee, but I know you're canonically a terrible and often homicidal boss. Your clones are incredibly easy to kill, and I'm not leaving until... I don't, I don't know, livable wages? Better working conditions? Screw it, we're starting a union. I need a union rep to advocate for me, because I'm, I've just been kind of shooting my way through here. Not a, not a lot of braining going on. Now, Jack is really hard to slag as a general rule. He also does a lot of teleporting, so in a really roundabout way, his clones being so easy to kill made things a bit harder. By there being no other enemies nearby, I pretty often attracted racks. They're not a huge deal in terms of a threat, but they're annoying and soak up enough damage that Jack should be receiving that the fight becomes considerably more difficult than if they weren't here. I found that Jack was stuck for a bit, and I was hopeful until he started doing his little two-step. Also then the crux of the issue of racks. Them running into you causes things like jump damage, so despite having gotten his shield down, that right there is a reset. After a bit more of a bout, I lured him over to one of my favorite spots to cheese both him and his pet. Curiously, he really didn't run back anywhere. And it was far from quick with his incredibly aggressive health regen, but it was very doable. Only so much abuse that he can put up with, and he also wasn't spawning his turret for some reason. He's not very good at dealing damage on his own, so while I doubt I could quickly replicate the methodology, he performed in his usually weird fashion and went down like the trust in his company. Not nearly fast enough. And of course, you know how the warrior goes. Big, easy to hit, lots of health and damage resistance, but it's not a big deal. It can't really hit you when you're in a lot of different places on the map, so it's basically free. Unless Rax constantly harassed me, causing a series of resets or deaths from the Rax or my own guns due to the Rax. So, this being one of few examples of a time that you really do need to get at least a bit closer to the warrior to fight it effectively. Mostly just try to prevent your guns from going after and pissing off the infinitely spawning wildlife. If at a distance, basically just go for when Rax aren't anywhere even vaguely near it if you can. But even when it tries its best, it is more than killable. Here's the mail, it never fails, it makes me wanna throw more guns. When I come, they better run for mail! Or, of course, you know, a rat could force a reset just after the warrior died, meaning I have to save quit just to go push a button, kill Jack, and touch a key. Why not? I'm speechless. And also payless. Eh, yeah, well, still worth it. All in all, a really fun run. I stand by, I adore the gun, and this challenge has done absolutely nothing to harm my love for it. If anything, it's only stronger than before knowing just how much it can handle in the right hands. Who knows, maybe there's some more TD or in my future. The gun rang does sound pretty fun, and also like a potential nightmare. It seems either perfect or horrible, and ain't it just fun to find out which? While I'm unsure of what I'd like to tackle next, I am positive that I'd like to thank my lovely channel members for your support. You are the proverbial bullet regen that fuels the figurative series of drone-based guns in my life, and while this metaphor may have escaped me, your generosity has not. Genuinely, thank you. Every day that I get to work on these goofy little outings is a gift that I don't think I'll ever really be able to repay. Regardless of who you are, though, I hope you've enjoyed your time here. You probably know how to use social media, and I hope that means I get to hear your thoughts now and on any future outings. Until then, remember to stay safe, spread some kindness in the world, and I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.